Good afternoon. Five years ago today, Pele made her dramatic return to Kilauea with the beginning of what became a four-month-long eruption on the Big Island. 22 fissures broke out in Leilani Estates, later culminating with that massive 200-foot fountain at Fisher 8. Homes and businesses were destroyed with nearly $800 million in property damage. Five years later, life is returning to Leilani Estates. Howard Dashevsky is there and spoke to some residents he joins us live with more. Howard. Aloha, Jean and Justin. You mentioned Fisher 8. That's it right there behind me. And as we're going to show you in a moment, it is still steaming. Uh, five years, and I can't believe standing here in the exact same place. I remember being in total awe watching and experience what was going on. Of course, as we see right here, the volcano Metapele created many dead ends and roadblocks for the people that live here. But those same people... Well, there's no stopping them as they continue to move forward. Take a walk through Leilani Estates and life seems somewhat normal. The foliage is back, thick and plush. The ash that covered everything is gone and the roads are smooth again. A far cry from five years ago when smoke was rising through cracks in the asphalt and everything once green and thriving was dead. The result of toxic gases, life in the subdivision had come to a complete halt. I know these people, you know, they, they didn't lose a house right here, but they had plans and a uh, really great couple. The process has been long and grueling and mentally straining for a lot of the community. Um, so we're all just working on creating a positive future, which it's happening. Life here in Leilani Estates has somewhat returned to normal, but at the same time, so much has changed. You look at all this hardened lava that covers such a huge area, and you realize that all of this used to be roads and homes. And the remnants of Fisher 8, the most prolific and damaging of the 24 breakouts, continues to steam, a permanent reminder of Pele's power. This is like rebirth at the same time that you had destruction and it was beautiful when it was all brown. It's beautiful now with the green in contrast to the black and it'd be even more beautiful tonight with the sunset. It just, it's always gonna be better. The eruption that lasted four months gave birth to nearly 900 new acres of land, but it also took away more than 700 homes and robbed future generations of the historic and spectacular fish ponds of Kapoho and vacation land. But time is a great healer. And for those who still call this place home, there's an understanding that it's all part of the give and take of living on an active volcano, whereas humans are merely visitors. This could all pop open again tomorrow, but it probably won't be for 100 years. And we're invested here. And, and it's a beautiful place to leave, be and, and live. And I think my neighbors and I have made good choices by staying. The ohias are sprouting, the ferns are regrowing, and the new land is so pure and beautiful. We're just caretakers of the land, and it's a blessing to be here. I, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Yeah, we're staying. <laughs> And that's the sentiment you get from pretty much everybody who lives up here. Most of the people here want to stay to themselves, which is why they live in Leilani Estates in the first place. But those who do care to speak, mostly off camera, say there's no place they would rather be. And I want to bring in now a good friend of mine who we've met over the past five years, Bill Hansen with County Civil Defense. Bill, first of all, uh, this is a very special place to you because from day one of this eruption, you were in and out of this place helping people evacuate, helping people try to save their homes. Uh, five years later, when you look around, what do you see, what do you feel? Yeah, I can't believe that it's been already five years since the lava erupted. It came out of Fisher 8, which is standing right behind us. It was um, a very traumatic time uh, in everybody's life. I mean, we lost over 750 homes, and a lot of people got displaced. But you know what? I think people are resilient over here. And as we see, the nature is bouncing back. Um, so are the people of Hawaii. I know you had some very uh, poignant moments. You tried your best. You, you hiked in with people miles over lava to help them rescue items from the homes, but you couldn't help everybody. And I remember you shared the story of one man, and I'm sure there's more than one, that you just couldn't risk going in to help them save precious mementos. To this day, that hurts, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it does. I mean, you, you, you figure it wasn't just me alone. I mean, we had county workers, we had state workers, always just, you know, leaning forward and trying their best to help everyone in their time of need. But sometimes we weren't able to do that. But wherever we could, we did definitely work and try to get that, try to change, change their lives around for the better. What do you see five years later, not only in the terms of the resiliency of nature, which is green and bustling last time you and I drew through here, it was a dead zone, but, but from the people and looking ahead, what could people expect and, and what are you feeling and sensing from everybody that does call this place home? You know, there's still work that needs to be done in this area and in other areas, but you always see the resiliency that we talked about in people and we, we see that there, there's got to be good in the future. And that's exactly what some of them talk about. Yes, you lose homes, you lose those beautiful fish ponds in Kapoho and vacation land, but they all said, there's something more beautiful that's gonna be on the back end of this. And you're even starting to see it down on the coast, aren't you? Yeah, we're also looking at, uh, you know, um, people looking at, they go to the beaches, they enjoy those areas. We're taking a look at the boat ramp as well and seeing what we can do over there at the boat ramp. But resiliency has been like the, um, the, the way that life has always been on these islands for thousands of years. Of course, hurricane season's coming up. I wish you a very calm time between Estelle and flooding and volcanoes. It's a busy time for County Civil Defense on Hawaii Island. We always got our hands full, as you know. I mean, this island has um, 11 of the world's climate zones on, on just this one island alone. And plus, just think of all the different type of hazards that we could be facing. And so we take it in stride one day at a time. Well, best of luck to you. Be safe, my friend. Always great seeing you, Bill Hansen, with Hawaii County Civil Defense. Again, with Fisher 8 behind me. People are hiking up there. It's private property, but people do go up. All I could do is urge anybody to be careful. For now, I'm Howard Dushevsky reporting from the edge of Leilani Estates. Justin Gina, we send it back to you guys in studio.